I have covenant with God Almighty that when he blesses me, I shall bless others. And when he gives me, I must share with those who do not have. Because of my own, I can do nothing. But I can do all things through God who gives me strength. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, my insistence in politics, after my traverse in politics, having formed this party, the APC, I have every reason to quit politics. But when I remember the poor, the widows, the sick, the needy, our nation bleeding, when I remember the insurgents, then I have reason to come back. I'm here to serve you. I've run for this presidency the third time. And I lack nothing. And I'm not in this presidency for primitive accumulation of wealth. I'm not here to buy cars or buy aircraft. I'm not here for anything. I'm here for one thing. To save the lives of the numerous poor Nigerians while uniting this nation. Nigeria must hear, hear me out. Today, New Zealand's Lily. Anyway, he was there regaling himself and all of that. So last, last, eh? Now, zero. The reason why you are watching that is because it is a popular saying. They say the Igbos must build bridges. Okorocha built more than bridges. Last, last, when it was time for them to remind him who he is, they did not miss the shot. And the rest, they say, is history today. So, the validation they are looking for up north eh, was also something I so much uh, detest. And it's pretty much like something all of them wanted to do. Eh? In Kano, this issue of water scarcity, because according to them, they said, Peter will be told them that if giving all these people the ball holes will trigger the supposed government to do what is right, then he has no regret. Children fetching the same uh, obese water in Kano. So they said that uh, Obi is exposing them by using small amount of money to do to give water to these people therefore they consider that that is giving them below average projects so what he has achieved is that he has got a lot of people talking and it has also exposed the entitled mofos those ones who believes that it is their entitlement it is their this and all of that stuff and those who are also doing it just so that they keep discrediting him as it remain a threat. You get that? So, but as it is, the question you should be asking yourself before you get yourself engaged in any of this is this, right? How many Northern politicians, how many have you seen in Southern Nigeria actually contributing to the development of our own communities too? How many? Zero. And for those who are giving them their money, well, it is their money. I can't really say much about that. Other than to make sure that you are not kind of helping them to amplify nonsense. If these rogues who are in charge of your government actually are doing what they should be doing, you don't need charity from me. 
I don't need to provide water for anybody. If he, I, I, I am living in the UK now. I do not have to provide water, not for myself or not for anybody in any part of the UK. It is water for goodness sake. 64 years of independence. Come on. So it's all intentional to make sure that they will never have access to that. Just like they won't have access to many, many things as they are naturally programmed to be like that. So if this guy uses his own money, millions of it, because let me tell you something. I have seen more than, I have actually seen more than uh, 10 balls and videos and pictures done by him. If it costs 10 million naira to drill bore oil in northern Nigeria, the cheapest, and pump, that means this guy has spent over 100 million naira giving water to people that government didn't give water to. And you actually think you are not mad, joining others and then uh, trying to throw them or trying to rubbish that. Oh, there's a party you share. Anyway, let's go forward. You have heard about the Shaguri Shaguri, the Shaguri brothers. Now, the Shaguri, this, uh, what's his full name again? Shaguri something, but I'll use Shaguri Shaguri. Shaguri is a Tipnumbu's confidant. Is uh, Tipnumbu's official confidant. He is the owner of uh, Eco Atlantic. Also, he is the owner of iTech Construction. iTech Construction is like that of a CCECC or Julius Baja or Mayegun Construction. That's still in the, you know, it is still uh, an incubator, right? So what they have there is that uh, right now, according to the Nigeria supposed uh, bidding law, whenever governments want to give out uh, a contract, or they need a supply, they will have to announce it to the general public and say, we are doing this, are you interested? Come and bid for it. They are planning to construct a road, they call it Coastal Road, okay, from Lagos to Calabar. It is meant to pass through that, uh, it's meant to start from Eco Atlantic and then straight following the side of the ocean, the coastal line straight to Calabar. And they said, if it is completed, it will take you just about uh, 56 minutes to drive from Lagos to Calabar. I don't know how true that is, okay? But according to them, they said it is the coast, I mean, the coastline, they said it's about uh, 56 kilometers. Um, is that even possible? Or am I even re reading right? 56 kilometers from Lagos to Calabar, if you are following the water, side of the water. Or if you, this, you know, you're following the water, they say it's about, uh, it's less than one hour. But if you have to follow the main inland road and all of that, eh, it's probably like uh, more than a four or five hours to get to Calabar from Lagos. So it's going to be the fastest. But however, uh, before now, they said, good luck, it be Jonathan or Basson Joe. In fact, no, Jul Jonathan was having a plan, similar plan to construct the coastal, the coastline or coastal line road, coastal road. And he didn't do it, just like the second Niger bridge that he drew the map, drew the plan, did everything, paid out uh, almost 80% of the money. But again, not until when election was coming, he didn't do anything on that. But they said when Bukwari came, he reviewed it. And somehow they said it was too massive, too expensive. So Bukwari uh, did not touch it. But when Tifnumbu came, hang on, oh, before Tifnumbu came, part of uh, the plan of building the road, they said it's going to cost them more than, hmm, more than uh, 500 billion naira to construct the road. However, they decided to make it a PPP, that is public 
private partnership. What that simply means is that if I win the bid, if my company win the bid, okay, so we will provide 50% of the money needed to construct the road. The government of Nigeria will provide 50% of the cost. So as far back as uh, 2019, they said the road will cost about 500 billion, which will include four gates, two this, and all of that stuff along the road. And they also expected to open up the entire axis for maybe tourism, family vacation of family, a fun time, a sort of a resort along the road. So they designed all of that, but they didn't do much, or they did not get partners to partner them. Okay, until Tifnumbu came. Now, Tifnumbu is there. Devulumai is the minister for work in Nigeria. They are now interested in the road. A supposed PPP project where partners have to bring their own cash. Nigeria will bring their cash and they will begin the construction of the road. When it came to Tifnumbu's time, now, Nigerian government go pay every, everything, but it is still PPP. Just the same way they did in Lagos. Using the Lagos uh, uh, I mean, uh, as a government, they used Lagos as a collateral to borrow 50 billion naira to start BRT. And today, the BRT is not owned by Lagos. It is owned by... What do you call them again? Primos, I'll be Primos something, something. I'll be Primera or something. The company owned by Tipnumbu's cousin. cousin. Now, Lagos State Government, they pay the salary of BRT workers, so drivers, everything. Oh. But it is, not B, it is not Lagos that own the business. The profit and everything of that business go straight. Whenever the BRT owner says they want to buy new buses, now Lagos State Government will buy the buses for them. Okay. They use Lagos State money to construct Lekki toll gates, including the road. They use Lagos State money to construct the road. Then they now build a toll gate on it. And they said the road is now owned. It's not completed, though. Lekki, Lekki Equa Express Road is not completed till today. Though. Eh? They borrowed over 100 billion era to build the road. Lagos State is still paying the debt, but Lagos is not the owner of the road. Lagos is not the one collecting toll on it. Another person is the owner. Tiknumbu's uh, son, Shei. So that's exactly what they are now doing with the coastal road of federal government of Nigeria. It was meant to be a PPP. Kaguri that did not, you know, there is no competition, there is no bidding. Okay? They just went straight and awarded the contract to Shaguri. Shaguri is not bringing any partnership money. Taguri, as Tifnumbu's confidant, his company iTech is now said to be the one to construct the road, and Tifnumbu's government will mobilize them with 1.1 trillion naira. The road is now going to cost over 4 trillion naira. Shaguri will pay no dime. Or they will tell you Shaguri paid when they will give you no proof that he paid. Nigeria will foot it, borrow the money. They will not complete it. The money will be gone but the road will be owned by Tifnumbu and his friends. They've done it in Lagos, didn't they? Yeah. They've done it in Lagos. All of you are talking about Lekki Toll Gate. Toll Gate, Toll Gate, Toll Gate. The place was constructed with Lagos State money. It's not owned by Lagos. The road is uncompleted, but they have been collecting money from it. So they will build toll gate on that. They, whatever portion they manage to, con to construct, they will build toll gate on it and start collecting money. Shaguri will start collecting the money. And you know what I mean now, Abi? By the time you go back and check the book, now Unago call this, ah, I thought now Nigeria paid for this road. How come it's owned by Shaguri? Now you are aware it will be owned by them. But there are businesses already there, multi-billion dollars of businesses opening up that axis that they want to pull down. So Atif could raise an alarm about this, and this is what uh, 
Tebunu Mahi had to say to Atiku. I read, read something on social media where um, credited to His Excellency, the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, on Coastal Road. Uh, I'm going to um, give him proper information uh, in Lagos. I will address World Press Conference. Uh, if there is anything he thinks is wrong with the procurement, he should approach me, he should leave the president alone. Um, it's quite degrading on my part for him to thank a former party chairman, former deputy governor, governor for eight years, a senator, that I'm not a stakeholder in this country and that I will do the wrong thing. So he doesn't understand figures, and I'm going to run figures for him to understand. And you understand how prudent the administration of uh, President Tinibu has been. He will understand how, uh, um, you know, prudency is taking the center stage, especially in my ministry. Uh, the president had once worried me on cost of a project, and I had to run the figures with Mr. President. He still thinks I should bring down the cost of uh, projects. At the same time, the contractors are crying that um, I'm oppressing them so much because what they were getting before, they are no longer getting. So uh, Mr. Vice President Antigua Abaka must know that I'm between and betwixt. Even the company is getting high tech. It was true persuasion that they are accepted to do the cost, to do that project at that cost. But when I run the figures, Nigerians will see what this present administration is uh, doing. So I'm not here to run the figures. I have seen the figures they are parading. But my figures are quite better than those figures. And I understand this engineering. So I'll run the figures. and. Uh, I would like uh, journalists to be prepared. I will give every account of that um, coastal route. Uh, given that uh, Mr. President had that vision when he was uh, governor, and they got uh, a gasseted you know, corridor, but subsequent administration also saw the relevance of that uh, project and they attempted to do it, uh, but uh, the administration of uh, President Goodluck Jonathan and that of uh, President uh, Buhari for New Zans Lily New Zans Lily Do you hear him? He kept saying I have the real figure and he also said that they had to beg ITEC Shaguri to do the project for them like that at that cost that they had to beg them there is no bidding Okay, it is meant to be a PPP. Shaguri is not paying a dime, and Nigeria is going to borrow money to try and start it, and it's going to be owned by Shaguri. How is that even normal? Like, that's a crime. That's something that you should, from Shaguri and every one of them, should actually, for contemplating it alone. Eh? They should be standing trial for treason, economic sabotage, treason. Well, it is Nigeria, the crime scene. It is a normal crime. Why, why are we complaining? Why are we complaining? Is that the first time? Come on. Look away. There is nothing you can do about it. That's all right. Or you won't claim not to be aware. You will not pretend that you did not hear this. In few years' time, you're going to look back and be like, oh, is that true? Oh, when you begin to act surprised. Oh, is that true? I didn't know that. Now you do know. And when you make it happen, when, they, well, yeah, when uh, it finally happens, right? Uh, we'll all be here. I mean, that's all I can say. They will do what they have to do. They will do what they want to do. It doesn't matter how you feel or anybody feels. Nigeria is like a conquered. Nigerians are conquered people. 
And as conquered people, you have no choice. You do not really have any choice until you begin to make your choices. Seen and known. So that's why I'm going to leave that. So Atiku with them. The other day I showed you uh, the uh, people of Enugu uh, who were protesting the Fulani terrorists incessant attack on them. Two people were killed in that same Enugu uh, yesterday from the Fulani terrorists that indeed came back and they said they attacked these two individuals on their way to their farms. Women who have been victims of uh, this uh, Fulani terrorist in Enugu protested that they do not want any Ruga in their local government areas. They cannot accommodate uh, moderate uh, terrorists in their communities. They protested, but no, the government is pretty much calling their bluff. Well, yesterday when we were talking about uh, whether people should or should not uh, protest, should protest or should not, so many people believe that uh, protest is a waste of time. Protesting for what? Defend yourself, stand up to the rules. If they know you have what uh, can actually hurt them too, they will run away. And for those who are protecting them, eh, they won't be there. And I think that's what the people of uh, this uh, community, which is uh, Angono, they are like uh, the Adani and, um, I mean, it came uh, uh, in people in Enugu, Adani to be precise. Uh, take a look. <laughs> calling on government come all oh, this and that too oh, but they've done better even though somehow we might think oh they shouldn't have let everybody see that but i think they should let us see that so that uh, we can say when uh, the criminal government begins to uh, pick some of these people up and call them ipob call them yes and accuse them I, I mean you know pack them this so that they can tell you i mean they can shield the real terrorist and make them look like uh, they are actually the aggressor. That's why we, I, I, I mean, I kind of love the idea. Here is it now. They are no longer waiting. They are doing it themselves. The CP in Nasaba. I'm out in our board, the CP and the area commander and the Wojbu uh, division. No way. As I'm talking to you now, all those uh, flying S men that killed one of my members, being the president in the Nowete community. And almost about the 515 number when they kidnapped, they killed 14, only one survived among them. So that's why we are not happy this morning. All the whole, the outside men, the planning men, went there for the awakened community. Me with my men then, who say we don't want them for my community again. Everybody to work with in my community. And we are telling uh, Delta State government, telling Delta State government, we should have for inside this uh, issue. But this is getting too much. According to that, our guy now will survive. Only the person will survive among almost about 40 people. The word is telling us say all the others are planning men say they are not safe in this community, the Kingdom. kingdom. They are surrounded everywhere. But we are telling the state government to intervene. We are telling the, the all the other highness to intervene. We are telling the all the other leader in the in the in the, in the, in the car land. Let all of them to intervene. But this is getting too much. We are not saving. 
We are not far, we are not family again. Everybody now is at home. So how can we do this thing now? We are begging, we are pleading that you help to make sure say to keep our Eka Kingdom good. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You are welcome, sir. Uh, Chairman, uh, according to your statement, you said they killed up to 14 people that they kidnapped. How did you know about it that people were killed, the ones that they kidnapped? Okay, uh, the one among the 15 that when they kidnapped, the ones survived when come back yesterday. Because normally before when they record, I'm the one who calling them when we are negotiating. So end of the day now when other people, about 14 people, no respond, they are not the money to break. So that's why the other one now will survive. So that one is the one who gives them two million. So because of that two million now, the release that one is the one who come back and tell us say now give almost about 14 people. I can see you and your men, everyone here are gallant. I can see that the job that you people have done this morning is very well welcome in our wicked community. They can people in Delta. Anyway, it is uh, the old phenomenon going on uh, in Nigeria. People have to resort to protecting themselves or defending themselves with whatever they can get or use or else. Mm. We are all just uh, awaiting disaster, okay?